Hey, I'm Jason, and in this video, we're gonna talk about three very easy things that you can do as a game developer to avoid running into messy code and having problems where you can't complete your projects. If you've ever had a project that you started working on and then thought, ah, oh, this is a mess, this is too hard to deal with, now things are breaking constantly, then pay attention because these three things are very easy to do and will make a huge difference. Before we get started though, if you haven't already registered for the free day of Game Dev Guild, make sure that you check the link in the description below Below. We're having an online conference starting May 1st through the 5th where we will have tons of experts talking about advanced topics like these and lots of other very cool stuff. Great networking opportunities and lots of cool free bonuses. All right, let's get started. Item number one, the most important thing. This is, I think, probably the most important thing for developers in general, and that is naming things properly. It might sound stupid, it might sound simple, but having bad names for your variables and your methods makes a huge, huge difference. Now let's make this a little less theoretical and take a look at some actual code. Here you can see I've got a script that makes absolutely no sense. If I scroll through it, pretty much have no idea what it's doing or why it's doing it, other than it mentioned something about lightnings in some text. And I've actually had coworkers who would write code like this, where it was nearly impossible to figure out what was going on unless you stepped through every little bit, started taking notes, and wrote down exactly how things were working. This is not the way that you want to code. Use variable names that are much more descriptive, like these. This code was actually for a B encounter in one of my latest courses, where you fight against a B that shoots down lightning bolts, has a couple other special abilities and other things that you definitely would not have been able to tell from this terrible set of variable names. So how do you come up with good names? Well, the number one rule is to be constantly renaming. If you find a variable name that doesn't actually match with what it stands for or what it does. Usually variable name should be a noun, so it'd be what it actually is. If you find one that doesn't match, then rename that variable. Make it match to what the thing is. If you find a method that doesn't match to the action that the method is doing, or maybe that isn't an action, isn't a verb, then rename that and rename again and rename again as the functions of your variables and methods change, then change the names of them as well. Now, if you're looking for other ideas on ways to improve your naming even more, one of the things that I saw that was really cool is you can just drop your script into ChatGPT ask it for naming recommendations to improve the name for clarity and code quality. When I tried it with this code, it gave a lot of really good recommendations, things like activate random lightning instead of spawn new lightning, and even found typos in my variable names like lightning. I don't even know how you would pronounce that. So definitely name things well, fix the names of your stuff so that you can find it later and if you've got a badly named lightning, you go search for lightning, you can actually find it. And you'll find that your experience and your kind of pleasure level in your game development will be much, much higher. Item number two is a little bit more complicated, but not much. The rule is generally pretty simple. When writing scripts and writing code, I try to keep my classes around 200 lines or less. This is not a hard rule, but it's a general soft rule that avoids me coding myself into a giant mess. It's very easy to start writing code in a single file and add a little bit more and add a little bit more, add a little bit more functionality over and over and watch it grow and grow and grow. And it's easy to do that. It's a lot easier than splitting things off, at least initially. But as the file grows and you start to get to 200 lines and 300 lines and 400 lines, it's still probably pretty manageable, but then it gets up to 700 and 1,000 lines and suddenly you're finding errors and running into problems where you don't remember where in the class it actually does the thing that it needs to do, or you change something in part of the class and another piece completely breaks, it just gets a lot more difficult to manage. Now, a hundred or a thousand, uh, sorry, not a hundred, but a thousand lines is not unmanageable. You can definitely have a thousand line class and work with it and have it be okay. My general recommendation though is aim for 200-ish because it's a whole lot easier to deal with and a lot less likely to turn into what often happens when you stop having these rules is uh, something like a 10,000 line class. I've run into multiple of those in actual AAA games, enterprise applications, all kinds of other things, and they're always a problem. They're always a big headache that nobody wants to deal with and makes it so that things take a lot longer. I, not just 
classes too. I can think of extreme examples on uh, EverQuest. There was one method, not not a class, but a single method that was 10,000 lines for equipping items. Took six months to refactor, tons and tons of work to be able to make simple item changes. It's again, one of those things that the code starts off simple. It's easier to just keep adding. It's a whole lot better long-term if you start to think about code size and the quality and separation. Now, when we talk about this, I say, hey, keep your code short, but I don't really tell you how to do it. The way that you really need to go about this process, it's not deleting code and deleting functionality. It's moving thing, moving bits of functionality to related classes that actually map to the thing that they're doing. So if you have a player character that's moving around and has weapons on it, maybe once you have 200 lines of player character code, including your weapons, and you're starting to add more, move that weapon code over to a new script. Have a weapon script that's just for dealing with the weapons and has a reference to the player if it needs it can access things on there possibly but doesn't have it all in one spot you'll find that things get a lot easier to deal with and a whole lot easier long term especially once you start bringing other people into your project or wanting to change the way that your game works Let's move on to item number three. This is one that helps with the other two, especially with the second one, with splitting things out. And that's using and preferring or just remembering to use interfaces. Now, interfaces, if you're not familiar with them, allow you to define a contract between the way that a class will work with another class. It allows you to have multiple classes used in a different class. So I can have a player who has a bunch of different maybe types of weapons. Let's just stick with the weapon example. Say they have a rocket launcher weapon or maybe they have a knife weapon and I want to be able to have the player use both of those weapons but I want those weapons to do drastically different things. The rocket launcher obviously is going to shoot a rocket propel grenade off and then the uh, knife is going to you know that. So what, what we want to do is separate out the code at the point of those objects, but have it so that our player still just uses the weapons the same way. To do that, we would add an interface like an iWeapon interface onto our knife and our rocket launcher, give it a use method, and then our player could just call current weapon dot use and it would use whichever weapon they have equipped remembering to do this and split things off when you have more than one use of a thing or more than one way that something can be used is very important if you find that you're doing things like type checking you're checking if blank or if this object or whatever the object being passed in is a knife or if it is an RPG or if it is a player, you're doing the is checks or is as checks, then you probably have a good case for interfaces being used. Not always, not 100% of the time. Again, I think this is a, a topic that probably could use its own full video. If you think that would be interesting, please uh, hit the thumbs up button, drop a comment down below and let me know. And maybe I'll just do a full video on the whole interface separation. But I think that it's one of the most important things. And I'll also link a full video on interface and the explanation on how to use them with some real code examples down below. If you agree with these three things, please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. And if you disagree, drop a comment and let me know what I'm wrong about or why I'm crazy. Bye.